Hey everyone, welcome back to Points for Trying, the show where we celebrate ideas and inventions that weren't successful, but are still worth remembering. I'm Brandon. And I'm Jessica. Here at Points for Trying, we make it our mission to sling knowledge at you. And today, we'll be looking at two inventions that had the goal of slinging people. And to introduce today's first invention, I'm just going to read the title of its patent. Apparatus for Facilitating the Birth of a Child by Centrifugal Force. Uh, since this next invention involves delivering babies, and that's a topic I know next to nothing about, I'm just going to hand this over to Jess. So I think we can all agree that childbirth can be pretty difficult. But on the other hand, merry-go-rounds are pretty fun. And with this in mind, George and Charlotte Blonsky developed a device that put a new spin on delivering babies. The expecting mother slash victim would be strapped to a large circular table, which would then be rotated, gently pushing the baby out with centrifugal force. Because if it's good enough for NASA to train astronauts with, it's good enough for your little bundle of joy. When the magical moment finally arrived, the baby would fall into a net which would activate a switch that powered down the machine. And if you're concerned that this invention is being criticized by an engineer with no medical background and a woman that's never given birth, don't worry. That also perfectly describes the two people who invented it. That's right. George Blonsky was a rail engineer, not a doctor of any kind. And the couple both, quote unquote, loved children, but never had any of their own. And I'm really skeptical that someone that loves children seemed to be hell-bent on ejecting them out of everyone's bodies as quickly as possible. <laughs> what I find very interesting about this is that this was invented in the 1960s, 1965 to be exact. So it feels like modern medical science has advanced to the point where this should not have been the thing that they thought about doing. But like we talked about in other episodes, people had this fascination with all things NASA, all things mechanical, all things space rackety in the 50s and 60s. And it, it permeated everything. And I think that this just is another example of that. Yeah. My other theory is that the 1960s weren't as progressive as you might think. Uh, and to illustrate that, I would like to read an excerpt from the patent application itself. And just be warned, these are some very 1960s opinions. So I will do my best to read them in the most 1960s voice. It is known that due to natural anatomical conditions, the fetus needs the application of considerable propelling force to counteract the atmospheric pressure opposing the emergence of the child. In the case of a woman who has a fully developed muscular system, as is common with all more primitive peoples, nature provides the necessary equipment and power to have a normal and quick delivery. This is not the case, however, with more civilized women, who often do not have the opportunity to develop the muscles needed in confinement. So yeah, the 60s was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe not as progressive as I thought. But what's interesting to me is that this is after the twilight birthing in obstetrics, which was a combination of morphine and scopolamine. And they would mix these two drugs together and it would put the mother into this twilight sleepy state so she wouldn't remember the pain of childbirth and then would just come out, wake up with a baby. By the way, if it would have worked better, I guess there were a lot of negative side effects and also people felt very disconnected from the whole birthing process. But to me, that sounds perfect. I might have had kids if that's how it went. But I feel that this centrifugal contraption should have come, I don't know, before the invention of using drugs to make it completely painless. Yeah. I mean, now I'm curious as to why we stopped doing the uh, just put someone under and they wake up with a baby because uh, speaking from experience, it works wonders for getting your wisdom teeth taken out. <laughs> And those are exactly the same thing. 
<laughs> I, I mean, I don't know, like, obviously not a subject that I know a whole lot about, but it seems like if you had the opportunity to not be awake for that process, you might take that option. But seems like it might be super dangerous to give birth when you're asleep. Right, exactly. Uh, I mean, sp speaking of the fact that this was invented in the 1960s, we're looking at the patent drawings, uh, which are always fun to look at, and it just looks positively medieval. This is a giant circular table that's got to be like 15 feet in diameter. And the woman's just strapped in as if this is an Iron Maiden. Uh, and her head is right smack in the middle of it. And she's just kind of uh, pointing outwards. And there's a little net to catch the baby as it inevitably comes flinging out. I would love to know if they ever actually tried this on a human. And also, how hilarious would it be? I mean, obviously terrible, but also hilarious if the woman's head was not exactly in the center. So it wasn't like she's just spinning around, but more like getting dizzy in the process. Yeah. To answer that first question, I was not able to find any evidence of this being built or uh, tested with a human being. And that is a really good point as to what sensation would this be? Like, I'm guessing that this would make someone dizzy, but, you know, usually when you're spinning around, you know, your head is, is spinning with the rest of your body. And with this, you're basically just rotating around around your head as if it's a pivot. So I really don't know what that would feel like. I don't think that's a sensation most of us have ever had. I bet it would be real trippy because your body wouldn't know how to handle that. You would probably get really nauseated. They should make it like a carnival ride. Um, and it might be pretty fun if you're not in the middle of giving birth to a child. Right. That's the thing that we keep forgetting about is that there's an active childbirth occurring. <laughs> and, and as soon as the baby is born, uh, I do, you know, they did think of this. Once the baby falls into the net... It activates a switch that powers down the machine. But, you know, the baby falls into this net. Everything turns off. You have to wait for it to, like, spin down. Then I guess you just fish the baby out of the net and, like, unstrap the mother. For Like, th this does not seem like a good time for anybody. No, and also, you have to think about the fact that when the baby comes out and is supposed to trip this turn-off switch... I guarantee you that at least 50% of the time, it would not have done that because things just don't work the way that they're intended to. Oh, yeah, yeah. It it, uh, it could go wrong, but it, it could also be manually deactivated. I think there was something that was really telling. The patent described it as capable of accomplishing delivery even if the patient is too weak or has lost consciousness. So... This is almost admitting that, like, maybe people are going to pass out when they're in this. I wonder if they would have had you practice in the early stages of pregnancy, just so you know what to expect. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, at, at that point, you're halfway through the first year of Top Gun Academy. <laughs> Here's your baby, ready to be a fighter pilot. Yeah, I mean, uh, th this apparently could make a force of seven Gs. Which, oh my God, yeah, you're 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 birthing a tiny little Tom Cruise at that point. <laughs> he already is tiny. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like you know, that that baby uh, grows up and maybe does join the Air Force, and they're they're getting uh, ready to like get strapped into the G Force trainer, and the colonel is like, "You you ready for this, Private?" And he just goes, "Sir, I was born ready." <laughs> <laughs> that is a cheesy movie for sure, and I would pay to watch it. Oh uh, yeah, but not a lot of money. But I would pay to watch it. I I would pay to I would pay to watch Top Gun, but with toddlers. It's like a boss baby type thing. <laughs> I love it. I was wondering when to work this in, but it's like a giant record player. But the only song is Screaming Mothers. You know, you can turn it off when you have a screaming baby as well. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, if you ever were going to uh, have children of your own, how likely are you to choose the uh, centrifugal birthing apparatus for your childcare needs? I'm not allowed to choose zero, 
okay, one on a scale of one to ten, one. I am much higher on that scale for the twilight birthing than I am for slingshotting a baby out of me. All right, yeah, this thing fucking sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, listen, they don't let pregnant women get onto roller coasters with good reason. Maybe they should. It would just pop right out. <laughs> maybe maybe they should have a, a pregnancy coaster just for pregnant women. I don't know. I think all of the ladies who have ever given birth are going to write in and say, um, you don't know what you're talking about. To which we say, you're right. We don't. And neither did the inventors of this. That's true. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I think it's time for the ad break, which hopefully is not Pampers. <laughs> Today's episode of Points for Trying is brought to you by Aperture Science, makers of the handheld portal device. Need to get from point A to point B? Use our patented quantum tunneling technology to slash travel time to zero while keeping most of your molecules intact. Use offer code CAKE when you check out and get a free weighted companion cube with your first order. Aperture Science. We do what we must, because we can. So let's say you're standing on the ground next to a five-story building, and you want to be on the roof of that building. Now you could go inside and then walk up the stairs. You could even take the elevator, but honestly, who has time for that? What you need is this next invention, referred to in the patent application only as controllable launcher. But for now, let's call it the man cannon. The concept for this launcher will be pretty familiar if you've ever seen a Roadrunner cartoon. It's basically a chair attached to a rail, which launches a person upwards at the correct speed and angle so that they reach the top of their trajectory at a point just above the roof. It's more complicated than a circus cannon, but only barely. The patent describes automated systems to measure the distance to the building and the weight of the payload, and then calculate the optimal firing conditions. But at the end of the day, it's still flinging a person into the air and hoping they land in the right spot. The project actually gained some interest from the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, known as DARPA, presumably because ACME wasn't giving out any funding that year. This was patented in 2012. Yeah, this is a pretty recent one. Holy moly. But it's insane. Uh, and this really is one of the simplest patent illustrations I've ever seen. It's a rail sticking up out of the air. It's got like a little basket, like the kind you'd see on a cherry picker. But the person's legs are just kind of dangling out. He's sitting on the floor of the cherry picker and his legs are, are dangling out from either side. And it just goes from the ground up and the person gets flung right out. This... There's no way this would not catch your foot. Yeah, I mean, I think they'd have to be careful on what the, the seat looked like so that, yeah, you, you don't get snagged on something. And Now, did, did it fling the person without the seat part, i.e. the person then has to land on their feet? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the seat doesn't go anywhere. You, you just get flung out like a catapult, and then you're flailing around until you hit the roof. Ooh. And there's even a handy diagram with what angle and speed of launch you would want to be launched from depending on how many stories the building has. So a, a two-story building, you're looking at a 22-mile-an-hour launch at 80 degrees, and you'll reach the roof going 3.9 miles per hour laterally. So, you know, you're, you're for lack of a better term, going to hit the ground running. If you're lucky. <laughs> And according to the diagram, as you go up, the higher the number of stories, the faster miles per hour you're going when you hit the top. You could essentially just skid right off the other edge. Yeah, if you're launching onto a fifth-story building, I didn't check this math, but according to the patent, if you want to launch onto a fifth-story building, you'll exit the cannon at 40 miles an hour, spend almost two seconds in the air, and then reach the roof 
going seven miles an hour laterally, uh, as you said. So yeah, I, I think the limit to this would be how many G-forces a person can take from the launcher, but also how much lateral speed they're going to have when they get the roof. I mean, you, you couldn't just launch someone onto a 14-story building because they'd just be going so quickly sideways that they you wouldn't be able to, to walk. Also, I like that the one thing that ties these two inventions together is unnecessarily putting people through g-force uh yeah that's the theme of this episode one other thing that i don't think was really thought about is most buildings have very limited roof access and that roof access is usually locked from the inside so you can't open it from the outside so even if you were to successfully launch somebody onto this five-story building the likelihood that they're going to be able to then get into the building is not great. This brings up a, a really good point as, who the hell is this for? <laughs> because DARPA had interest in it and because really there's not many other uses, I'm assuming this is going to be used for some sort of counterterrorism or, or military application. In which case, it doesn't matter if the door's locked when you're on the roof, you have a gun. You're going to put shape charges and blow it in anyway. Yeah. And as someone that has worked on roofs uh, quite a bit, a lot of roofs are unlocked from the outside. Wait, really? It's a bit of a safety hazard to have a door that's locked from the outside when it's on a roof because somebody could get stuck on the roof. Mm -hmm. So it, it all depends, but the doors are more often locked to go onto the roof than to get back inside from the roof. Oh, interesting. See, I have only ever seen them from the inside, and I see all of the locking mechanisms on the inside, which, to your point, does mean that you wouldn't be able to get onto the roof unless you were authorized access and had the key. And not to spoil the ends, but I do think this would actually work for its intended purpose. But I really want to dig more into the question of what is this purpose? Who is this for? Dead animals and watermelons so that you make it stinky for them. <laughs> I honestly can't think of anybody that would use this other than, you know, some sort of special ops forces or, or military. And that's why I think this should be named the Swatapult. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Couldn't you see this in the next, like, James Bond movie or, like, the next Batman movie? Sure. Like, one of the drawbacks is, you know, this thing would take a while to set up. Measuring the distance between the launcher and the and the wall, making sure it's the right angle, pulling the protractor out, getting everything set up. I mean, that's going to take a while. Plus, it's likely that you're going to hit a building on the other side of the street or... <laughs> electrical wires on your way up, street signs. But just think about this, and whoever's uh, writing scripts for Hollywood movies, this is a freebie. Imagine like five of these packed into the back of a tractor trailer truck or something. The truck pulls up to the building, you know, the roof slides back, and you've got these five guys and they all just like sproing, sproing, sproing right onto the roof. And then they, and then they do whatever James Bond needs to accomplish in, in that one. Steal the diamonds back from Goldfinger. Clearly, we don't watch enough James Bond movies. <laughs> the other thing is, if we're assuming that this is some sort of military-style invasion, why not just angle it a bit lower and launch someone just right through the window? Why are they, why are they going on the roof? Because glass hurts. He's wearing a helmet. They're always, I don't know. They're, they're wearing helmets. Like SWAT teams always have like those helmets and gas masks and gloves. They're, they're, they'll be fine. <laughs> Maybe it's less stealthy when you smash through plated glass. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. There's two things I don't know much about. Giving birth and counterterrorism. So... <laughs> well, we can't be good at everything. Right. All right, so... What improvements would you make? And then how many points do you give this for trying? Start with the, the baby spinner. Uh, you know, with the baby spinner, I think its biggest weakness is that it's it's causing too much rotation and, you know, rotating really quickly can make someone nauseous or, or dizzy. But what if it used that same G-force acceleration but in a straight line? Maybe just strap someone into a race car and they'll kind of just drag race 
and that'll provide some some gentle uh, pushing motion for the baby. In that way, nobody has to spin around. Like all of the acceleration is in a straight line. So in this in this race car example, is the mother's head towards the front of the car? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I thought I'd ask the engineer. That seems to make sense to me. Yeah, yeah. You put a basket filled with pillows right behind the car. And then if you accelerate fast enough, the baby doesn't go anywhere at all. The car and the mother just zoom right away, and the baby just plop right there. (laughs) All right, all right. Yes, that's an idea. That is an idea. Okay, so what about points? How many points would you give it? I think it gets a point for being inspirational and really teaches me that maybe I can go into the medical field without any medical training. That's really not what you should have taken from that. That's what I'm taking from it. You know, we we can all change the world, even if we're not doctors and have no experience with childbirth whatsoever. All right. I like it. Okay. So for me, I think the improvement would be to not have it be about childbirth at all. This sounds like a really fun carnival ride. (laughs) And I think it would be much safer as a really fun carnival ride. So I say the improvement is take the childbirth out of it completely and make it into a carnival ride. Oh, yeah. I do give it points for creativity. It is a type of childbirthing that I don't think anyone had ever thought of. And I give it a point for being a potentially awesome sauce carnival ride. Well, if we're going to turn it into a carnival ride, we need to think of a good name for it. I think we could stick with baby sling. (laughs) The baby sling? People would wonder all the time why it's called that, and only a few would know. Mm. It would really get people talking. You know, I just thought, though, if this was a baby deliverer, it would have the perfect soundtrack to go along with it. You know what song I'm talking about, don't you? I don't. You spin me right round, (laughs) baby, right? (laughs) Oh, how did I not think of that? That's hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) Soldier Catapult, what say you? How could we improve this? And how many points do you give it? I honestly don't think this needs a whole lot of improvements. You know, the the physics of this is pretty sound. You can pretty easily calculate the speed and angle you need to, to launch something at to hit a specific place. I think this actually would be pretty effective in getting a person onto the roof of a building. That being said... I don't think you ever need to do that in 99.9% of life. (laughs) You could always just fast rope in off of a helicopter. Like, this is only for getting to the roof of a building that you don't have access to. You could use a ladder, or you could go inside and take the stairs. (laughs) Even a firefighter, because one of the articles I read about this mentioned that maybe this would be useful for firefighters. But to get back down, you either need a ladder, which means you could have taken a ladder up, or you need to go through the stairs or something, or rappel down. I mean, we already have fire trucks with with really long ladders on them. Like, we've solved that problem. Right. I feel that anything that is of the short enough stories to actually be useful with this catapult, you already have things that reach that. That being said, it should be in a movie or like the next Call of Duty game. I think that it should be either in the next Incredibles movie or the next Despicable Me movie. Wait a minute. What if this was a carnival ride too? (laughs) I would pay for that. Like you could make the roof really soft and bouncy. (gasps) Like like you get launched onto a... Catapult you into a bouncy house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get catapulted onto a bouncy house. Yeah, I think we just invented two amazing carnival rides. Absolutely. All right, so how many points? I think it gets the coveted point of being a good idea. All right. But a good idea in desperate search of a problem. (laughs) I also give it a point for something I want to see in Fast and Furious 10. As far as improvement... I, too, think that this is a really good solution looking for a problem to solve. I would add that if your payload was going to be a human being, adding some sort of parachute-type system to slow the crash 
when you come down and prevent you from sliding off the other side would be beneficial. And you can just increase the angle so that you have a little bit of extra time as you're coming down for that canopy to catch some air and slow you down so you don't break yourself. Because what good is it that you finally made it to the roof of this building that you've obviously had a hard time getting into if you break both your legs upon landing? Oh my God. I think you just invented a new extreme sport. (laughs) That would be awesome. And I would totally do it. (laughs) I wouldn't, but I want to see you do it. Okay. So that is the only improvement that I would make on this one. So... I give it a point for being pretty functional and a point for sounding really fun, like something that I would want to do. So Soldier Catapult wins. I mean, maybe there's a way to combine the two because, you know, that's the straight line acceleration that we wanted from the baby delivering machine. So maybe, you know, we just kind of use one of those. The new mother gets a fun ride onto, onto a parachute and the baby is kind of left behind in a little basket. <laughs> You'd have to figure out a way to like tie a string around the kid's arm so it doesn't go with the mother. Like we said at the beginning, neither of us are doctors, and we are not giving medical advice right now. Don't try this at home. Or do. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Before we go, a big shout out to Janelle for suggesting the person launcher idea. And if you know of any crazy kooky inventions that we should cover on Points for Trying, just write into us or leave a comment. That's all we've got for you this week. And until next time, if at first you don't succeed, tell us all about it. Have a good one.